We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. May we shine a light of love. May we shine a light of love. With every thought, with every step we take, may we shine the light of love. May we shine a light of hope. May we shine a light of hope. With every thought, with every step we take, may we shine the light of hope. Um, this morning for our Time for All Ages, uh, we have a special video to share with you of some of our congregants um, of all ages sharing what they are thankful for this year. Um, I'd also, before we share the video, like to remind you if you want to send any photos for next week's Time for All Ages, it is going to be our photo slideshow um, inspiration taken from our month's theme of um, healing and also last month's theme of deep listening. So you can send those to me at dre at grandvalleyuu.org um, by Friday to get them in the slideshow. I hope you enjoy our congregation's thankful thoughts video. Hey, Betsy Warner here. I'm thankful for this beautiful valley that we live in, um, our planet Earth and all of its glory, the cleaner water we had this past spring with the industrial shutdown, um, these clear blue skies we get to have here in Western Colorado also. I'm thankful for my family, thankful for the chance to connect with others even on a small scale, thankful for music and dance and art, and thankful for civil disobedience, having a voice, being able to use that voice to try to write, uh, well, that's not the right word, but um, trying to use the privilege that we have in a way to protect the most vulnerable in our society and change injustice. Hi, I'm Liam and I'm 
Our centering words today come from Sherry Woodbury. We gather to worship on the brink of another Thanksgiving. Since its last celebration, our planet has journeyed 584 million miles in its orbit around our local star. To what lengths have we gone in this same span to circle around the great sun of love? And for what shall we give thanks in this season shadowed by hardship? For the miracle of breath, we give thanks. For the care of the caregivers, we give thanks. For the silliness of children, the wisdom of elders, the patience of parents, we give thanks. For all that goes right in our bodies, instead of going wrong, we give thanks. For friends that reach out and for our own skills to cope, we give thanks. For clerks who clerk, teachers who teach, and leaders who lead, we give thanks. For poll workers and vaccine researchers and anonymous do-gooders, we give thanks. For the sight of friendly faces, the sound of warm voices, when we are lonely and discouraged, we give thanks. For the beauty of the earth and the splendor of the skies, we give thanks. For the love from which our birth over and around us lies, we give thanks. As surely as the earth moves around the sun, held in its great power, and the tides lap at the shores, moon drying the waters, so shall we follow the true north of love, turning toward love again and again in this sacred hour. Come, let us worship together. Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not, cause the dreams bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Close to the ones here today. Close to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the dreams bring back all the memories. And the memories bring back, memories bring back you. There's a time that I remember when I did not know no pain. When I believed in forever and everything would stay the same. Everybody hurts sometimes, everybody, everybody hurts someday, yeah, but everything will be alright, go as your voice will say, hey, here's to the ones that we got, cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not, cause it's dreams bring back all the memories of everything we've been through, close to the ones here today, close to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the dreams bring back all the memories.
Our words of um, gratitude this morning come from Dorothy Day. It's entitled Commitment. People say, what is the sense of our small effort? They cannot see that we must lay one brick at a time, take one step at a time. A pebble cast into a pond causes ripples that spread in all directions. Each one of our thoughts, words, and deeds is like that. No one has a right to sit down and feel hopeless. There's too much work to do. Mm. This is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And for the first time, at least in my 48 years, millions of people are deciding that they are not going to go home to be with loved ones this year. This is a Thanksgiving like no other. And we are being asked to make a different set of choices this year, to chart a new uncharted course for our country and for the world. The next few months as we enter into this holiday season will be a time for us to really go deep and determine in a new way what is important to us, to determine where our priorities lie. Now in late November, is the time for us to decide what type of spring we are going to have. Now is the time to plant our seeds and our bulbs for the spring of 2021. The last eight months have been a dress rehearsal. Now is the time that we plant the seeds that we want to see sprout in the spring. And I was, trying to write about gratitude this morning and, and what it means to plant seeds of gratitude. And the only thoughts that kept coming to me were images of exhausted nurses, of ventilators, of elderly people in their homes by themselves. And I realized we don't find hope by ignoring reality. We find hope through clarity, 
by taking a clear assessment of what is around us and then knowing that we can do something about it. Knowing that we have agency to change things. So let's look around us for everything that we don't want to see. What is the seed we need to plant so that something different raises up in the spring? We see this disease spreading everywhere. So we plant seeds of self-discipline to stay home now so that we can be together later. We look around and we see conspiracy theories about why our democracy can't last, why it doesn't work. So we plant seeds of truth, educating ourselves on how our electoral system works and setting the course so that the citizens of our country have a much better understanding of what one vote means and how much it matters to show up to have your voice heard at our polls. Right now, we look around and we see fear. The fear of so many people who have either lost their jobs or are expecting to in the next few months as we have more shutdowns and stay at home mandates. And those people are having a sick feeling in the pit of our stomach if we may be losing our jobs. And so we plant seeds of mutual aid and care. The seeds that were planted eight months ago in our parking lot through Grand Junction Mutual Aid. At our given meeting on Tuesday, we were told that the Lutheran Church is working to turn their vacant building into housing for homeless people this winter, since they are not worshiping there right now. They are planting seeds of trust seeds of care so that people who are feeling scared and vulnerable can come and get food and be treated with kindness. We look around and we see friends and family and neighbors who we love and who we care for, who it seems are being brainwashed and manipulated with mass media. And we stand strong by planting seeds of truth with facts, with math, with science, planting the seeds and holding the space for clear-headed rational thought as slowly the people in our lives who we miss are able to shake the manipulation clear and come back to us. I was watching a TED talk yesterday with my chaplaincy class that, that I lead, and it was the TED talk of Anita Moriani, who I spoke about a few weeks ago. And she was talking about her, her near-death experience, and she used a beautiful analogy of imagine yourself being in a warehouse, a big, huge warehouse that is completely dark. You can't see anything there are no lights there you're standing in the middle of it it's completely dark except you have a small pinpoint flashlight and as you're moving around this huge warehouse with this little flashlight the only thing that you see is whatever is directly in front of you with that little pinprick of light you get glimpses of what's in the warehouse but you don't really have the ability to see anything beyond your own little beam of light. And then for one instant, the floodlights in the warehouse go on and you have a chance to look around and you see how huge it is. You see how many things are there. You see that the walls are lined with shelves with every different type of item you can possibly imagine. And then the lights go off again and you're back to just your little pinprick of light but something has changed. You've had a glimpse of the hugeness of the warehouse. You now know that there is so much more than you could ever have imagined because you've seen it, if only for an instant. Now is our time 
to remember that even if we feel like we're in a big dark warehouse and we only have our own little pinprick of light and if our little pinprick of light seems so ins insignificant surrounded by all of the darkness until the person next to us comes and stands next to us with their little pinprick and then a third person and then a fourth person and before long the collective lights are working together to create a much larger picture of the warehouse. It just takes a few people who were there when the floodlights turned on to be the reminders and the hope and the steady voice of reassurance that it really is going to be okay. So as we enter into this Thanksgiving week, I don't want us to stick our heads in the sand with shallow, simplistic expressions of gratitude. I want for us to dig deep and know that we are so much stronger than we realize, that collectively we do care for one another so much more than is revealed in the media that we have so much more individual and collective power than we give ourselves credit for. I was talking to my sister-in-law last week and I said, you know, in the next few months, we, we're gonna, it's gonna get dark and we just have to hunker down and then the lights are gonna come out and the spring and the flowers. And I thought I was being wise and helpful. And she said, that's great for you, you have savings. Our business won't last until the spring. I don't know what we're gonna do. We're losing everything. I think what I was trying to express to her was my idea of planting seeds, the seeds of rest and renewal as we enter into the quiet darkness of winter. But she didn't hear that. She couldn't hear that because right now she cannot rest. And my words of hope rang hollow to her. And so I realized at that moment that perhaps some of the least helpful words in 2020 are, it's all going to be okay. I think about her words as I was writing this sermon, because if my words are just shallow platitudes of it's all going to be okay, it rings hollow for millions of people right now. Those words that I thought I was offering hope weren't providing hope and they didn't provide comfort because everything is not okay right now. 250,000 deaths in the United States alone is not okay. The daily fear of having simple human to human interaction and wondering if that encounter might make you deathly ill is not okay. The loss and the death and the grief experienced as a result of this pandemic is not okay. It's not okay to have to say goodbye to a loved one via FaceTime. It's not okay to watch a business to watch a business that a family spent 30 years creating destroyed overnight and barely hanging on. It's not okay. None of this is okay. It's horrible and it's scary and it's sad. And it's not okay. And yet here we are entering into a Thanksgiving weekend where millions of us are making the, the conscious decision to not be with extended family and friends this year. It's a new type of Thanksgiving. And maybe this is a Thanksgiving where we really get to sit down and give thanks for those things that really do matter. A Thanksgiving of the heart of the deep inner struggle and the realization that we are stronger than we thought. Of the realization that we are not alone 
in our shared solitude, an acknowledgement that we are better together than apart, the realization that it is the small things in life, like a roll of toilet paper, that really can make all the difference. We give thanks for a community that comes together every Tuesday in a church parking lot to offer what they have and come receive what they need. Perhaps this Thanksgiving is a time to honor the doctors and nurses who are bone tired and yet keep going on. A time to honor the teachers who create two lesson plans every week, one for in-person learning and one as a contingency for when all of a sudden with no notice, the in-person connection stops, but the teacher-student relationship continues on. A time to honor the grocery cashiers at Safeway and Walmart and City Market who have been at work every day for eight months, still offering smiles. A time to honor the bone weary election workers who tirelessly counted ballots for hours and days on end to ensure that we have the cornerstone of our democracy done with integrity. These are the little things that I'm grateful for. And when put all together, they are not little. They are big, they are life affirming. They are the beacons of light in the time of darkness. They are what keeps us going on. These are the people I am grateful for. The moms and the dads learning how to work from home and be a teacher at the same time. The children and the teenagers who are resilient enough to show up in their Google classrooms wearing goggles and goofy hats and turning their fellow students into talking broccoli faces and then taking screenshots to show their moms to prove they were indeed in class. These are the things I'm grateful for. They are little and they are large and they make all the difference in a world that has been thrown into crisis. So yes, this week I will center myself in a paradigm of gratitude for all of these little gifts that we give to one another on a daily basis. I don't know what to say to my sister-in-law. I don't know what this next year is going to bring, but what I do know is that when we live into these little moments, big and small, when we each continue to shine our little pinprick of light and we know that millions of others are doing the same in their own simple way. And when we hold on to the hope and the faith and the knowing that the warehouse is so much larger than any one of us can see from our limited perspective, then yes, everything really is going to be okay. So my question for all of you for the next few minutes is what are the seeds of gratitude that you are planting today? I'm going to allow us to unmute ourselves and um, I invite you to join in this conversation with us. I'm grateful for my little dog and the seed of my ability to stay close to her and, and feel a little bit of comfort will then make it easier for me to comfort others later. Thanks, Sherry. Piero, what would you like to say? Uh, I'm grateful for for the warmth of people, even though we can't exchange closely, that I get 
um, even from like a, a grocery store. I mean, um, Vitamin Cottage. That I, I know. I anyway, everybody is very nice, and I'm I'm thankful for the earth, the 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 what we have here in Grand Junction. There's just so many beautiful places. Even walking down a street and looking at the leaves of a changing tree is beautiful. Uh, yeah, the little the little things of beauty. They yeah. they do matter. They do. Yeah. And maybe we can all learn how to appreciate the little things more to make the big things more whole, whole and loving of each other and things by living things. Yeah. Monty and Elizabeth, would you, you wanna say something? I'm grateful for the various national groups of activists <laughs> such as Hold the Line or Choose Democracy, who, who prepared and knew ahead of time that, that this post-election season was going to be how it is and um, kind of put together a plan and are working to help, you know, to mobilize people to help our democracy. And I guess this, the seeds that I am planting is just to kind of con continue being connected to those groups and, um, and, and doing small actions like writing a letter to my senator, just little things that they suggest to help plant seeds for a stronger democracy in the years to come. And um, I'm just trying to figure out my seed, I think, right now, because I'm, I'm trying to think of ways to really reach out to some of the the Trump supporters, and and it's really difficult because I think at this time it, it's kind of like uh, of your story of of, uh, re, of planting seeds and and reaching out to the restaurant owner who who's losing everything. That maybe this isn't the time to do that because I think right now a lot of the, the Trump supporters, you know, they don't want to hear things like let's unify the country and, 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 you know, those kind of, those kind of things right now, they're still just angry and really fearful are a lot of them. I'm making assumptions here, but, but a lot of them are just really still really angry and fearful of, of what they think the country might become. So, so I'm not sure what my seeds and how to reach out are, but I think that maybe as time goes on, you know, maybe it might, might be a couple months or a few months before, before we can really start to truly try to reach out and unify. So, so I'm just still in the, trying to understand what my seed needs to be, I guess. You know, Monty, maybe just right now, seeds of compassion and kindness to everybody you interact with, regardless of whether or not you know their belief system or their political affiliation. You can never, we can never go wrong with kindness. Floyd, did you want to say something? Uh, I lighten it up a little bit. It's kind of interesting. You're talking about planting and seeds. I had somebody call about five minutes before, uh, the service started that he's coming out to get a whole load of truckload of compost to put in his garden and he's gonna whatever i don't know who he is or anything but it's kind of interesting november he's coming out to get a truckload of compost to do something with it yeah so things go on and things things people keep planting things <laughs> yeah yeah exactly happy thanksgiving everybody Thank you, Floyd. Adrian, would you like to say something? Yes. And uh, I think for me, I'd like to plant seeds of patience, first of all, because I think what you're talking about, Wendy, through this sermon is what I understand to be patience, seeing that there's a broader picture and trusting that. So a seed of patience. Um, seed of introspection and reflection, using the time to really examine what does matter 
and then seeds of communication, clear communication with empathy. It's truly what I want that to be. Thanks, Adrian. Bill or Cheryl, did you want to say something? Yes, um, I'm very, very thankful for all the people who are out there, out and about, taking care of us, uh, the checkers in the grocery store, the, especially the healthcare workers in the hospitals taking care of so many very ill people, and the people who are out there putting their lives on the line to uh, test to make sure that we can put a stop to this simply by finding out who's sick and keeping them away from those who are not. Um, I plant seeds right now uh, with my money. I plan to give money to the food bank and uh, make sure that, that people who have not enough to eat have a place to go and, and find something. So for that, personally, I'm very thankful for being healthy, being able to stay home, having a roof over my head and enough to eat. I'm gonna miss my family very much uh, at Thanksgiving table, but uh, I'm thankful also that, that they are, are well. Yeah. So why don't we um, sing ourselves out and then the invitation is after we sing Blue Boat Home together and extinguish our chalice, we will enter into breakout groups for whoever would like to. So. Let's uh, close ourselves out with Blue Boat Home this morning. this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Go your way in peace, wander as you may. 
Blessed is the path you take. May love guide you on your way.